what we're looking at in here, as with any other kind of function you've learned, let's say square root. You first learn what that does, but eventually you start saying, what does the graph of that look like if you make this a variable, right? You first start by saying, hey, what is this number? What is this number? Uh, what, but eventually you say, what does the graph of it look like for any number you put under here? That's what we're doing now. You've used the numerical uh, integration things on the calculator. Whether you use a T84 and it looks like it's supposed to, or you use a T83 and it looks like F and int, you know, 10 of T, T, 3, 4, or whatever, right? The display is down here. Let's go down here. Whoa, too much. Um, there's the display on an 84. The display on 83 is using that FN in. But the idea is the same. It gives you a value, the area under the curve between 3 and 4. The idea now is we want to be able to graph things because we've just looked at writing functions that involved integrals, right? Writing a function of x where that's part of the one of the boundaries of the integral. But you can graph it on your calculator because if it has, if the calculator has a function, you can use it in graphing. So on the calculator, you can graph y equals, and when I say calculator, I mean any technology, right? You can graph, you can graph this thing. So if you're using an 84, you can go, and why don't we actually get the calculator out here? If you're using an 84 here, you can, uh, you can put that in. You can say y equals, uh, you gotta find this integral thing. Go all the way down or just go up the bottom of the menu, F and int right there. It looks like that. You can say, let's just do a simple function here, 3 up to x of, I don't know, let's just do something simple like x squared. Oops, except I didn't put the x. x squared, except I said I was going to use a different variable. On the calculator, it doesn't matter whether you use a different one or not, but if you want to be consistent with how we wrote it on the paper, we could do this. We could say alpha t squared dt. You don't have to on the calculator, but it might be a good idea for you just to emphasize that's the variable of the function. This is just a dummy variable to remind yourself what the function is. You can graph the thing. That's going to sit here and try and graph. The, the values it'll graph are the area under this curve from 3 up to whatever the x value happens to be. So the numbers might not make any sense right now, but and, and the other thing to know is it goes really slowly because it's doing all the tedious calculations that you would have done if, and now I don't know what the numbers are, it might be, maybe the numbers aren't even in this window. So let's pause the video until the graph shows up. <laughs> so it's, it's there, right? It's the values, does it make sense that it crosses at 3? Because it's the area from 3 up to whatever number you, you work with. So the area from 3 up to, let's go back to this. When x is 3, what's the area under that curve? 3 to 3? Zero. 0, right? So it makes sense that this function has an x-intercept of, of 3, right? But, and then it makes sense that when this is a smaller number, like 2, 3 up to 2 sounds kind of stupid, right? But from 3 to 2, like you're going backwards, the area is going to be negative. So that thing goes below there. And then um, above there, it's going to be positive. The other thing that's going to be is if I zoomed out on this graph, what type of graph do you think that looks like? What shape is it going to be? Now, if you know anything about integrals or antiderivatives, if this is a quadratic function, if this is squared, what's its antiderivative going to like? What's, what's the integral of this going to be looking like? Go back to the graph. This looks like it curves a little bit. It's hard to tell. What's this going to be? Do we need to do we need to find out here? Let's uh, change the window a little bit, and then it's going to have to go through and do the tedious graphing again. Let's make this negative twenty-five. I don't know how low I have to go here, and let's make this five. And let's graph and let the tedious graphing begin. I obviously didn't go. Oh no, I, I went low enough. All right, this is this is going to make for super exciting video on YouTube. You know that. 
What is it starting to look like? Going across, what's going to happen now? We know for sure it has something has to happen here. It looks like it looks like a cubic, right? Why does this end up being a cubic? Remember what the function we were doing, right? We're doing the integral of a we're doing the integral of something that's a quadratic. So it makes sense that it's that the integral is going to look like a cubic, right? It's actually going to be the graph of one, not just cu x cubed. It's going to be the graph of one third x cubed, and it's going to be shifted down somehow, right? And it's going to be shifted down somehow to make the values match up. So it follows everything else. If you're doing the integral of something, it's just the inverse of finding the derivative, right? So if you know that the derivative of something cubed is, you know, inverse is, if, if you know the derivative of something cubed is something squared, you know the derivative of something squared is something, the inverse, the integral of something squared is going to be something cubed. But, it, the, I mean, the, another point here is that if we can do this on their calculator just the same, just graph that, just graph the integral, okay? So that's the idea here. There's an exploration for you to do. Um, you can, uh, it, looking at graphing things. So here's this function that I just did, and I, I don't want to take away your, uh, I, I think I just used the same function here as for it. So you, you could pick a different thing if you want. Um, play around with it if you want to choose a different function there, but but uh, go through and do it for yourself and uh, make some sense of it. And then the second exploration here is looking at the value of A, the starting value, and when it makes, you know, does it make a difference what happens? What happens when you're graphing just the function? What happens when you change A? You can make a prediction. Does it matter or not? And then what happens when you're graphing the derivative of this? My hint to you here is put this in as y1 on your calculator and maybe, you know, call that y1 and then when you do it for a equals 2, call it y2. And then when you're doing the derivative of that function, instead of entering the whole thing in again, just put n derivative of, just put y1 in there. Don't rewrite the whole function again. Okay, so what I mean there is if you have the calculator, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here, but uh, if you have the calculator, it, if I have that function in there, then just put uh, numerical derivative. On this calculator, again, it actually shows it the nice way. Numerical derivative with respect to x of, just say y1 here, which you can get to under variables, y variables, y1 at x equals and put in your value there, okay? If we're graphing this, if we're graphing this, the value that we're doing this, it has to be x, right? It isn't a constant, this has to be x. Just like up above here, the upper limit of integration was an actual, it was x, was a variable. This has to be x here because we're graphing it for every value of x. I, you need time to digest this, which is what you're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and do that, okay?